Hey folks, Jonathan here. Today I want to do a little video on wireless remote control and uh, on my wrecker. And one of the reasons I'm doing this is we're going to do wireless remote on the, the rotator I'm building. And it's going to be a lot more functions uh, and, you know, just a more complicated unit. But uh, just wanted to show you exactly how this works and uh, what you have to buy and, you know, what you need on your truck and what you know you may have to add to your truck but uh, to start this is the control box and you can see this is control wall wireless uh, I bought this as an 8 function box and this has got the little antenna on it and you can see and really good sealed unit waterproof have had no trouble with it whatsoever uh, just got it mounted to where it's actually under my pylon as you can see so that, I mean that does shed some of the water off of it but uh, the company I bought this through the guy the individual uh, actually told me he uses these on his uh, some kind of a spreader truck and he lives in Minnesota and he has them mounted on the frames and they go through the snow and the ice and you know they get covered in ice and they still work and this unit will work from 500 feet away and you know you hear that stuff about some things but we've actually tested this one and it, it will work at 500 feet away I mean you can be out of sight of the truck and it works so you know you won't have a tro any trouble with that here is the lanyard that we've gotten with this one and this is eight functions this is just a small unit and uh, this is more like a you know almost like a keychain unit but uh, you know you've got eight buttons and each of these buttons operate a different function and uh, I'll explain to you what I mean by function. Okay. Here's my control valves. Now, all these control valves I bought new. And this is a stacked valve setup, bolts together. These control valves was new, but they was on a... Somebody else had bought them, and they had never been used, but they was four or five years old. So they was new, but not new. And there was a notch cut in one of them. don't know why or how, but didn't worry about it but I added I had actually added these ones and on this this is the SV control unit like I'm going to use on the other wrecker and uh, you can add I think you can go up to about nine and uh, actually well that is nine got nine on it I think I don't think you can go any more than that and we're going to use two you know two sixes on the other and we're going to remote at least six of them and we may do some of the outriggers too and the reason I say that is when you buy these units they're like I said this is an eight function so that's only going to run four control valves uh, you can get a, a 15 function and you know which would run seven control valves and then you'd have one extra and you know it's sort of weird you know they don't offer them in you know two and four and six and eight functions I mean so it's different different functions and I'm not sure why they do that but that's just the way it is there's two different style functions you have a momentary function which means when you hit the button and you let off the button uh, it comes back a locking function is if you hit the button and it stays locked and it don't come back and you definitely want a mo uh, the momentary function if you're ordering a remote for for this style and uh, and what operates this is air and as you can see you know one function would move it that way another function would move it down this way and then you know your next function your next function so it just moves it back and forth and what operates that I'm gonna pull this cover off and show you what I've got I've just got air songers, uh, got them running to the ones that I, you know, wanted to operate. These are, uh, I think the songers are two inch travel. So, you know, just do your measurements and set it up to where the travel is right. Uh, you know, I could have added more or less or whatever. Now you see I got heim joints on the ends of them, so they won't give any trouble. And these was actually used songers that a friend of mine picked up at a factory. That's why you notice two of them threaded and that one and that one is not and they're just they're made a little different but they was the same cylinder so I used them uh, you know you save money anytime you can and as you can see I got the little lines running to them uh, just I think it's eighth inch plastic and uh, I got the quick connect airline air fittings on them I bought all them 
and uh, you know I've got them all numbered of course and and you know you sort of need to do that because all of the hose is the same color it ain't you know, it's not color coded like a uh, like a wire would be but uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the actual setup that I had to build and uh, you know besides adding these cylinders on I'll show you what you, you know what's involved with that in just a minute okay we've got the doors open here and uh, I've got a box here now this is an old electrical box and I used it just because that's what I had uh, it'd probably be nice you know depending on where you got it mounted at if you use something that was waterproof uh, this ain't waterproof but you know it's inside the box toolbox so I don't have any trouble with it works really good uh, I'm going to open it up here and show you how this works. Okay. Now, this is like having 10 pounds of crap in a 5 pound bag, but, you know, I wish now that I'd have went with a bigger box, but, you know, it's, it is what it is, and it all fit in. Okay, what we have, these are the wires coming out of here, running to our control box. Okay, it gets its power from the red wire here, and the ground from the negative. And all these other small wires are functions. And each function is nothing but a 12 volt, you know, impulse coming from that box, you know, out this wire. So, you know, this black wire, the white stripe, red wire, the white stripe, blue, yellow, you know, the orange, the brown, you know, all eight of these are actually functions. And what we've got is the power running from our box, you know, to our, you know, through our functions up through here, and then I've got a diode on each one, and we'll try to get in here just a little bit closer, where you can see good. Okay, we've got a diode on each one, and the diode is just to keep anything from back feeding through. We don't want any problems with our our box up there. That's recommended. It's not required, but it's recommended. Uh, you know, a diode is a, like a one-way valve for electricity and uh, you know you won't regret putting one on anyway and uh, so we've got it running through there and then run into a relay I've got eight relays there's four here and four down below that's hard to see hidden by wires but uh, the reason we've done that this box up top is good for 30 amp for a 30 amp draw I'm not sure I can't remember what these draw I don't think they're 30 I think there's something like 20 but I didn't want to take a chance so I put a relay on each one and essentially what happens is your power comes through here operates whichever relay you know it needs to operate and then the power comes from the relay down to our control and these are solenoid operated air control valves and there's actually eight of them on here and you gotta have eight so there's two per function or I'm sorry two per control valve you know one function each and what I've got is air there's a there's a manifold back here eight ports out going to each one of these to provide the air and then there's one coming out each and each one of these lines are the lines that you've seen at the control valve or the air sonders on the control valve that were numbered and you know that's what operates it and the uh, <clears throat> these are $25 a piece and I, I've got them bolted together like a control valve set, but they don't, there's no air passages between them or anything like that. You know, there's just ease of mounting. Uh, they work really good. And I don't know what I've done with my remote, but let me get my remote here real quick and I'll show you work. Okay. When, uh, when I push the button, it just sends a signal. You know, to our control box up there to send power through one of them wires, which operates one of them solenoids, which operates one of these air controls, which you can see the lights come on. Each one you hit, a different light, you know, the, the light comes on for whichever one you're hitting. And, uh, the fingers don't want to hit the buttons good. They work really good. Uh, haven't had any trouble with them, and there's not a whole lot more to it. But I mean, 
that's the whole basic system. You know, you can you can go with more or less or whatever you want to do. Uh, takes some time wiring it, kind of a pain, but uh, well worth it in the end. And on our rotator, we're going to go with about. I, I'm going to buy a. It's a 15 function, which you know I don't know why it's not 16, but it's a 15 function, all momentary buttons. Uh, we're probably going to use at least 12 of them, and uh, and we may use more, uh, but I, I want to be able to operate the entire, both winches, boom up and down, boom in and out, rotate, and uh, slide forward and back all off the you know wireless remote, and then. Uh, we will uh, still be able to do it, you know, manually, which is always nice because I've had wreckers that had solenoid operated control valves, and you know, if you have an electrical electrical problem, then you lose all your uh, your function, and there's nothing you can do. At least with this, you know, it's sort of a backup. And uh, the other one, of course, I'm going to use a bigger box for. But before long, I'm I'm going to build a use one of my rollbacks. And do a video on a a control a remote control system with two functions, which would be in and out for the winch, and they're really nice to have because you can sit in the vehicle when you winch it, and if you get in a weird spot going up a hill or you know in front of a house or something, you don't have to worry about if it broke loose coming out, uh, you know, or people back behind. You can always hit the brakes and stop the car. But uh, what we're going to do, we'll do it on one of the trucks with no air. And we're gonna, we'll have to buy two of these uh, solenoid operated control valves, which is $25 a piece. We're looking at $50 there. I can get a remote set, a cheap set, for about $50. And I'm gonna use a air compressor off of a Cadillac Escalade, and which is a, you know, it's a quality compressor, so we won't have any trouble with it. And you know, we don't, we only need 25 psi, so. And it's just a suspension compressor, and you can use one off of about any vehicle. And uh, it don't take much to run this this setup. And we'll get a hydraulic cylinder, we, or air cylinder, I'm sorry. We can get one of them on eBay really cheap. And uh, that's probably what we'll run. And I'm going to try to do the whole system for less than $150. And I, I don't see it being a problem. And, uh, you know, they're, to buy the setup, you know, it's expensive, especially if you don't have air on your truck. Uh, you know it costs a lot of money so I'll we'll show everybody how to do it cheap and uh, or $150 I mean that's for the system it's cheap to me but uh, it's not hard to do I mean a lot of wiring involved a lot of time involved but you know it's uh, it's a pretty simple setup so just want to show you this and like I said we'll do one on the on the other truck and uh, you'll understand it a lot better when I'm as I'm doing it but if anybody has any questions or you know, uh, needs help doing one of these, let me know. Be more than glad to help. And uh, appreciate everybody watching, subscribing, commenting, liking. And until next time, bye.